Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. It's starting to get warm again though. We're talking by the first of next week. Being back up into those mid upper 90s around here. Some of you I know are still dealing with that. But that's unusually hot for this area. And it just doesn't feel good. Like we're, we're getting into that, that latter part of September now. We're supposed to start feeling kind of fallish, which it has been for the past week. We've had some nights it's been downright chilly. Um, but that's how things go around here. We always have that little fall teaser and then we get back to summer and that looks like that's gonna happen. Um, might be the last time I mention this before it happens, but um, we are having our local meeting this weekend September the 18th. Uh, you are welcome to attend if you live in the area or if you just want to do some, some driving, some traveling. Uh, shoot me an email if you want to know more. Uh, it's in kind of the south central Ozarks or central Ozarks. Uh, give you an idea of where it's at. We're going to do a, a silver raffle. We've got some silver to, to give away or to raffle off. And I will be talking about uh, which I don't usually talk at these events much. I don't usually have a presentation or anything. I just kind of open the, the door and get things going. But anyways, I'll be talking this month on uh, mag groups, tribes, small groups, how to organize them, some ideas on, on getting them organized and kind of keeping them going. You know, wh what's a mission statement should be like and different things like that. And then we have a, a very smart guy that's coming and he is going to give a talk on CBDCs. What are they? How they affect us? Gold and silver and possible alternatives to the, the new CBDC thing that they're gonna try to ram down our throats. So it's a good, good time to come. Good family event. Anyways, ha, huh, so this morning, Wanted to talk about something I touched on. I don't remember if it was earlier this week or last week. I'm getting older now. I don't have that kind of memory to remember what I ate for dinner last night. Um, to talk about uh, the stuff that's going on in the world, not political, but natural, or at least that appears to be natural. Planetary changes, cataclysmic changes that could be happening. now seem to be at least here lately uh, just jumping right in the thick of things and getting people upset that I'm wrong or that don't know what I'm talking about or whatever oh well good thing I have thick skin not gonna focus so much on the technical theoretical possibilities because there's a lot out there pole shifting you know continental sized tidal waves, uh, some other planet that could be floating around out there in space, uh, possibility of us going through some type of, our planet and solar system going through some type of galactic wave or gravitational belt in our uh, galaxy that's causing the, the poles to not necessarily flip, but to compress down towards the equator, which is in fact what it looks like they're doing. Uh, which will expose a lot of our planet, um, you know, without that that, magne that, that magnetic uh, field around us. A lot of stuff out there. Massive weather changes. I've seen a lot of big earthquakes. Uh, these are things that I like to follow. I have read and studied for at least a decade, but I always figure that there's a lot smarter people out there on YouTube talking about it. So I kind of defer to them uh, when, it get, when we get down to the technical on it. And what I focus on is how we need to prepare for these things because I'm not gonna go out on a limb and say that we are 100% guaranteed uh, into a, you know, some type of global, global cataclysmic type of change. But I will tell you that it's looking very promising that that is the case. 
And so that's kind of where I want to put my focus uh, on that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, looking at the and a channel to kind of watch if you've never heard of him. He doesn't put out a lot of videos, but when he does, they're important. Uh, YouTube channel called Dutch Sense. In my opinion, which may not be much, probably the, the best uh, comprehensive analysis of, of earthquakes and, and what's really going on and how they affect us. And he's been, for well, the last few days, putting out some serious warnings uh, because of the earthquake activity, not just that it's happening, but how it's happening, that he believes that, you know, California could be getting ready to have a, a pretty big one. So there's just a lot of stuff going on out there when it comes to this. Many of us, us meaning me too, believe that a lot of this great reset in Agenda 2030 is being done because these elites know or believe that these things are happening, are going to happen. And that they're gonna be so catastrophic on this planet that, you know, if there's not some plan in place to have technology or to have people under the thumb, that people could just, you know, go wild or whatever, and then they would lose control over, you know, their, their, their cattle, us. And so there's a lot of people that believe that that's what this is all about. You know reduce the earth's population that way that you know after these cataclysmic changes and there's less food and less stuff available uh, there's also less people so we'll be fine i don't know but boy it sure looks like that getting back to actual preparedness uh, which is where i want to focus in this video number one i guess a lot of people ask is are these events even survivable? I mean, if they're unlikely for us to survive, why go to all the trouble? And I'll be honest with you, if, if I had enough evidence presented to me that indicated that my, me, me, my family, all of us, that there's just no chance of survival, that we, you know, a you know, mile high wave is just gonna cover us all and we're gonna die within a few seconds or instant. And I'd say, well, you know, let's turn this, you know, prepping focus into ministry and just go that direction because, you know, we're not going to survive and, you know, not everybody can go build some kind of sealed off bunker at the peak of a mountain. I do believe that everything that's happening or that what it looks like we're going through is survivable if you're prepared properly. Um, and I won't go into that because that's probably a whole video on itself of why I think that from the evidence that I have gathered and from the people that I've spoken with. Um, so we can survive this and there are things that we can do. One of the first things, uh, and this is why I promote this, is a two-year food supply. And I know you're thinking, man, that's a lot of food. It really isn't. I mean, weight-wise and bulk-wise it is. Yes, yes, yes. But um, it's not as much money as you think. I mean, a lot of people think, will sit there and say, oh, our grocery bill is $1,000 a month, two years. Man, that's $24,000. I assure you, I could buy two years worth of food for you and it would not cost $24,000 because you're not gonna be buying all the extra stuff and all the fancy stuff. You're gonna be buying food to kind of keep you alive. Uh, and if you do it properly, uh, you know, you might have a few thousand dollars in it, but it's not going to be $24,000 or whatever. And I advocate a two-year food supply because it's not that I expect whatever will happen, whether it be some kind of natural or cataclysmic change or geopolitical or, or whatever, collapse of society and stuff. I advocate for it because that's a buffer, okay? If society completely collapses, if the economy collapses and civilization collapses, and you have a two year food supply, that two years that you can live off of your food, and if you incorporate things that you're growing and stuff, it's potentially that you can, ooh, there's a little deer out here. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you did. If you can see him. My camera doesn't zoom, so. 
to zoom in. I don't know how well you guys can see that. There's a, there's a doe down there. Right about there. Can you see? Right there. All right, anyways, where was I? It's bow season around here, so <clears throat> that's what I should be doing. But hey, you guys are important, so I'm making a video. Um, where was I? If you have a two-year food supply and you could stretch it, if you, you know, add in food that you're growing, it acts as a buffer so that if everything collapses and you're, you're pretty suddenly unable to use the supply chain, that gives you a two-year time period to get your own food production up to speed, okay? You're growing gardens now probably, maybe you have chickens, maybe even some, some livestock, but are you living 100% off of what you produce? Most likely not. And it's not as easy as you think to just immediately get it going. So it gives you that buffer. It's the same way if there's some kind of earth shattering global, you know, planetary galactic change. It gives you a two year buffer. Um, most every theory and model that I have seen shows that the cold regions at the top of the planet could potentially be getting moving further down, maybe. Um, and if that's the case, uh, we're going to see the growing zones where we live change. Uh, for instance, I'm in a six, growing zone six. And I may end up being in a growing zone three. Or it could be the opposite. That could be a nine or 10. Um, and so I wanna make sure that I'm able to grow food in that type of climate, not just where I'm at. So when we stock up on seeds, I make sure that the seeds, the plants that I'm stocking up on, they're either capable of growing in a wide range of growing zones, <clears throat> or I buy seeds that specifically grow in a three or four or nine or 10, so that I have those also. So there's a, a helpful hint. Um, I mentioned the other day going underground. A lot of people didn't like that idea and I totally understand it. It could easily become a tomb. What I meant by going underground, and it's not just for everyone, is if you're at a high elevation and there's a cave, where you're able to build a, a bunker, that could be helpful. You know, if you're down a low, low valley area, maybe that's not where you want to build a bunker. Because, yeah, if there was flooding, that bunker could become covered with who knows how many feet of debris if there was flooding. So, yeah, I wouldn't build one in a low area, but... If you lived in the mountains and you had some you know, high areas, it might work. <laughs> Protecting your garden, your garden space, having shelter, uh, pretty good shelter that you can put your livestock, your animals in. Um, when I say garden, protecting garden space, um, and this is the same thing I would do if there was any type of nuclear attack, is we purchase large, thick, tarps. Uh, you can get an actual tarp for this, uh, silage type tarps, um, the type of vinyl tarp material that they use on billboards, something big and something heavy. And the idea is, is that if something like this happened, I mean, the odds of getting nuked right here, there ain't nothing around here. There's no strategic anything where I live. So the odds of that happening are pretty slim, but um, could the East or West Coast or other important places get nuked? Sure. And if that happened, there's definitely a, a time period between the actual bomb dropping to it, any type of fallout coming to me. So during that time period, I'm going to lay out these heavy tarps on the garden. It protects the soil 
it's not something I've come up with. I have read uh, several different things indicating that as long as the soil is not in direct contact, contact uh, it should be protected fairly well. This would also be true in some of these cataclysmic uh, events. There's a belief that whether it's the, soul, uh, the, the poles reversing or compressing down to the equator, um, and if there's potential chance for a kind of a micronova, that the solar radiation here on the planet could be pretty bad. I spoke recently with a doctor who studies this kind of stuff, also a medical doctor. And he advised, among other things, that everyone purchase some good quality um, UV, A, B, and C glasses. Because he believes that when the, the poles and the geomagnetic field, whether it collapses or is compressed, that it's gonna cause some intense UV rays uh, and it could cause blindness. You know, those kind of glasses you get when you have eye surgery, you've seen people, your grandma and stuff, cataract surgery, those would work really well. Um, what are some other things? <laughs> the, um, just, just getting ready for that part of it, the sun, possible sun changes, possible weather changes, fallout. The whole tarp thing would work good if you're near an area that there's volcanic eruptions protecting the soil from the ash. That's a good, uh, good thing. I mentioned animals, good place to shelter your animals. Um, it may get to the point that you wanna be more and more protective against the sun. I don't know if anyone's noticed it, and I thought it was just me for the longest time until I started asking around. And the sun doesn't look like the sun used to do. It's, it's very white. It used to, when I was a kid growing up, it was yellow. Now it's white. The sun itself is not changing. It's our atmosphere, it's our geomagnetic field and everything is changing. Um, it's much more intense. I don't know if you've noticed this year when you're out in the garden, that even though it may not be super, super hot, that sun's on your skin just seems very intense like it's almost like needles like it's burning your skin and, and it's not really that bad out these are all signs of these things happening and this is why we should get prepared this is why we should be as self-sufficient as possible um, i tell people this all the time i've said it on this channel more times than i can remember but i think it's a good gauge uh, think little house on the prairie I think that that would be a good focus of that time period and what they had. Yes, I understand they, they still had some kind of supply chain. You know, they were able to go to a general store and get things, but that could still exist, okay? Uh, it may not be completely cut off and the supply chain may just be regional locally. Uh, but I think um, Focusing on that, and the reason why I say Little House on the Prairie because it's a good book series and it's a good TV show series. Wholesome, your family can watch it, which is what we watch. And then I use it as educational material, talking to the kids. Okay, what would it be like for us to live like that? How would you survive? What do we need to do in our lives to be able to live like that? Um, and I'm not saying that everything in the show is accurate by any means, because it is still Hollywood. But... I believe it's a good way to kind of get an understanding of what we might possibly be living like, at least for a while. Um, I do think that the earth is going through some major cataclysmic changes. I, you know, I don't know enough about anything to say absolutely this is gonna happen, but it does be, seem to be apparent that a lot of stuff is happening and changes are happening, planetary alignments and all kinds of stuff and it is all biblical so that's why we have to keep getting prepared folks get your houses in order I mean too much stuff going on tonight thank you for watching catch you in the next video